Now, our perception of ourselves drives our actions. And, and, this, and we deal with this, um, I think, from a biblical perspective regularly, whether it's Mark or Don or myself or even our conversations among ourselves. We know that when you have wrong behavior, the answer is not just to chastise someone and say, um, fix it. Get it together. That, that's our tendency. That's what we want to do. That's, sometimes that's what we do with children, but that's different. As believers, as someone has a struggle with, a, with an action, a behavior, um, words or whatever, <clears throat> it's not always that simple. And that's not the correct approach. That's what religion says to do. Religion says to hide it, stuff it. But the biblical model is to, let's get our thinking right. Let's think about this right first because our perceptions drive our actions. <clears throat> now, here's the challenge. Often our perception is based upon emotion rather than truth. Emotions are simply our perception of reality at any given moment. In other words, we feel sad or despair. Sometime, many times that, that, that despair can come from our limited perception of reality and we think there's no hope. Or we think this single event right here is ruining my life. And, and this single event is, is sad and it's hopeless. And we're not looking at reality from God's perception from God's perspective. We're starting to build a reality along a narrow line of thinking. <clears throat> and so our perception can be flawed. Many times it is. It can be incomplete. Actually, it's always incomplete unless we try to gain God's perspective on it. And sometimes our perception of reality is based on an outright lie. <clears throat> You know, we might, we might think someone offers a negative opinion of ourselves. And if we just accept that as reality, there may not be any truth in that at all. And so we have to be careful with our feelings, with our emotions, and not let that dictate our perception of reality. We want to look at God's perspective. <clears throat> now, I'll close with just a little... Um, perhaps a little diagram. Maybe it'll illustrate this a little bit more. And we have fact, faith, and feeling. And there's a little poem that I'd encountered years ago and I'd forgotten most of it, so I had to look it back up. But maybe you've, um, you've heard of this before. But it kind of illustrates where we need to be with our, with our thinking when we're dealing with fact, faith, and feeling. And what we identify with and our perception of reality. <clears throat> Three men were walking on a wall. Feeling, faith, and fact. When feeling took an awful fall. And faith was taken back. So close was faith to feeling that he stumbled and fell too. But fact remained and pulled up faith and faith brought feeling too. And here we have the issue. We want fact to be driving our faith. We want fact, we want our perception of reality to be rooted in fact. And that will drive our faith, and then feeling tags along. But the problem is, as we go through life, because of our limited perception of reality, and sometimes our perception of reality based on a lie, or our flawed thinking, feelings come and go. It's it's more common for some than others, but everybody experiences feelings taking a dive. 
Well, when feelings do that, it's real quick to start questioning our faith. We start questioning what we're believing. And that's actually a good thing. But the, the solution is to bring faith back to the issue of fact. We go back to the Word of God. And so as a, as a Christian, maybe we stumble, we commit a horrible sin. And our feelings are driven down. We're in despair. We're, we're grief-stricken. We're saddened. We're embarrassed. And we, we have faith that it's kind of takes a little fall with it. And we think, maybe I'm not a Christian. You know, I, I sure don't act like one. And maybe this, maybe that. Maybe God's angry with me. We go to the Word of God and we look at the fact and say, no, I am a child. I'm a son of God. I'm a joint heir with Christ. He says, I'm saved by believing in the death of Christ for my sins. That's a fact from the Word of God. My faith comes back up because it's rooted in fact. And it's only a matter of time. It may not be immediate, but it's only a matter of time till feeling rebounds. And that's the order that we want to get it in. Too many times, people reverse this. And feeling is out there in the lead. And they base their faith on a feeling. Oh, they had a... They had a conversion experience where they felt so close to God. And they, they, they claim that they're saved now because they, they had this experience. And then they, they go through life struggle and their feeling takes a dive. And then their faith, they begin to question the experience. And they, they come, I don't know whether I'm saved or not. I thought I had an experience. And they've completely ignored fact. Fact is lagging along behind them. And we don't want to be caught in that struggle. And I, and I trust that none of us are, but perhaps we know people um, dealing with that out of order. And we need to be equipped to help them. And we need to be strengthened ourselves in how we think about this. And so, Lord willing, in the in a future... Um, future lesson will deal more and we're going to spend a lot of time dealing with our mind because this all starts in our mind it's in our thinking and we want to have and as Paul says to the to the Corinthians we have the mind of Christ in other words in the pages of scripture we have the mind of Christ the thinking that we are to adopt and, and that is what will, will gain us the ability to walk in newness of life, something that we should all strive for, something that we should want for ourselves, to be able to walk in that newness of life and experience the, the victory and the fellowship with Christ and the, the closeness and the, the peace and all of the good things that flow from that. That is at our disposal. <clears throat> So with that, we'll close. If there's any thought or um, question, we'll go ahead.